Are you hyped about your business? Of course you are. It's top notch. But let's get real. Passion alone won't make them buy. Don't worry, though. We've got you covered. In this summary to the one-page marketing plan, we'll unlock the power of direct response marketing. We'll share tactics that are not only affordable, but effective and scalable. Whether you're new to marketing or an experienced business owner looking for quick results, this summary is for you. Chapter 1. Find your target audience and tailor your message. Before we begin, let me ask, do you know who you are selling to? If not, it's time to hit the brakes on your marketing efforts. Because without a clear understanding of your target audience, your business's future is at risk. Any sales you make will seem random. Your advertising costs will increase, and your resources will run out quickly. So, where should we start? While it may be tempting to mimic the marketing strategies of huge companies like Coca-Cola, recognize that you are not Coca-Cola. Given this, it is best to niche down and adjust your marketing efforts accordingly, because focusing on a specific business subcategory is better than trying to appeal to everyone. For instance, health and fitness is a niche, whereas yoga for pregnant women is a sub-niche within the fitness market. By narrowing our focus, we can tailor our message and offerings to the explicit needs of pregnant women who like to practice yoga. Some days you may be worth it, while others, you may be loving it. On a good day, you might just do it. We have all heard these phrases from well-known brands, but your company's message cannot rely on a fuzzy slogan. This isn't to say you shouldn't try to catch your public's attention. In fact, most companies lack personality in their marketing. People buy from people, so infusing personality into your calling will put you ahead of the competition. But first, you must figure out what your target market craves. It's not an expensive watch, but a status upgrade. It's not fancy shoes. It's the need to feel glamorous. Once you understand your audience's desires, you can create catchy headlines, sales copy, and compelling calls to action to entice new customers to interact with your brand. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of starting a new business. As a result, marketers often fail to ask themselves, why should they buy from me? The best way to solve this conundrum is to create a unique selling proposition, or USP. So conduct market research and surveys to learn what your prospects want. Then, with this knowledge, you can create an offer that includes bonuses, upsells, and scarcity. Market research helps identify emotional triggers. Now, using persuasive language, you can use these to attract the right customers. After all, excellent copywriting is essential for sales success. So engage your audience using your preferred tone of voice. That being said, whether it's lighthearted, fun, or friendly, keep your message clear. Well done. You have just completed the first and second parts of your one-page marketing plan, finding your target market, and crafting a compelling message. Stay tuned for the next section, in which we will discuss how to reach out to prospects through advertising media. Chapter 2. Maximize your ROI through strategic advertising. Do you want your business to thrive? Then you must maximize your return on investment, or ROI. So forget about hope. Real business growth requires steady, measured effort. As such, there are two crucial metrics you should focus on. Customer Acquisition Cost, or KC, and Lifetime Value, or LTV for short. Let's break these terms down quickly. KAC is the total cost of acquiring a new customer, whereas LTV is the total amount a customer is predicted to spend on your business throughout their lifetime. So, why are these two figures so vital? They help you grow your business. Let's say a single yoga session's front-end profit is $1.25. We might think the campaign would fail if we spent $1.100 to sign them up. But if the client returns for more yoga classes, we make back-end profits, increasing our ROI. Let's discuss calculating a customer's lifetime value. So, how do we go about it? It's actually pretty simple. We just multiply the average customer purchase value by the average purchase lifespan. This will give you a number that you can use to evaluate and improve your marketing decisions. For example, assume a yoga studio charges $1.25 per class, 
and the average customer attends one class per week. By multiplying one sale of $1.25 by 52 weeks, we can see that the annual revenue per customer is $1,300. We'll assume a customer stays for two years, which means the lifetime value of a customer is $2,600. Remember, you must earn your customer's trust before they buy big. For this reason, you should place your recurring offers at the front end of your sales process. It's often worth taking a small hit up front, because, as you have just heard, you generally win profits from repeat business. Follow this strategy to build a loyal customer base and secure your business's revenue. Let's face it, advertising can be costly. But what if there was a way to reduce your ad spending? Well, you already have a head start. Focusing on a specific niche will save you money. For the most profitable marketing tool, look no further than email marketing. Instead of placing random adverts, you will do much better if you focus on getting your prospects' names into a database. This proven method can yield excellent results. But hang on, you need a responsive subscriber list to make the most of it. So, how do you build such a list? Start by delivering value in your emails. Give customers exclusive deals, insider tips, or helpful content. Make them feel special and appreciated. Be aware that advertising isn't just about showcasing your offer, it's about making connections. Social media networks are ideal for building relationships with your audience because they help you build social proof and gain trust. A solid fan base makes it much easier to generate leads and sales. Finally, make use of more than one lead source or customer. This way, you can protect your business from unexpected changes or algorithm updates affecting your bottom line. And don't be afraid to cut the ads that aren't working. Then you can optimize your advertising budget and see a positive return on investment. What media will you use to reach your audience? Fill in the third space on your one-page marketing plan. Chapter 3. Capture and Nurture Leads to Build a Strong Sales Pipeline. You have just learned how to reach out to those interested in your services. However, you cannot hit on people for an immediate sale. That's Bush League. Instead, show your prospects some respect. Sow some seeds and build a loyal customer base. With a little TLC, you can nurture leads into ripe opportunities. Trust us, building relationships is worth it. You will be better prepared to close the deal. So how do you capture these leads? Begin by creating a database to store client information and preferences. Then you can better understand their needs and tailor your marketing strategy accordingly. Lead generation can be overwhelming if you are not prepared. So it's time to bring a Customer Relationship Management, or CRM, system into play. Consider it your marketing brain. A good CRM will help you organize and manage your leads. It will also keep you sane. Let's see how a real estate company makes use of a CRM. Say they are offering virtual property tours to potential home buyers. After the tour, the company captures and stores their details in a CRM system. But what happens next? These property sellers mean business, so they start hitting up the client's inbox with regular updates, new listings, and their company newsletter. When clients open their email, they are transported into their real estate bubble, forming a relationship with this friendly team. And before they know it, they have signed the contract. They didn't even think to use another real estate agency. The bottom line? It helps to have a steady stream of potential clients. However, marketing is about more than just collecting names and numbers. With the right CRM, you can preserve your high-quality leads, form your approach, and keep prospects engaged until they are ready to buy. Now, just because you have sown your seeds and your leads are sprouting does not mean you can leave them unattended. You must roll up your sleeves and care for them like a pro. So how can you become a master marketing farmer? It starts with creating the right conditions for your leads to thrive. So deliver valuable information, engaging articles, and other appealing resources related to client interests. If you feed them, those tiny sprouts will grow into healthy potential customers who will remember your company when the time comes to buy. So what is the secret sauce to making all this happen? A marketing calendar, of course. This tool lists all marketing tasks you must complete daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. 
Plan like any other business event, and you will reap a bountiful harvest of leads and sales. So how do you plan to capture and nurture your leads? Fill in the fourth and fifth squares of your one-page marketing plan canvas. Chapter 4. Increase your sales conversions with the right positioning. Let's face it, sales are the name of the game. So, how do you convert leads to paying customers? Two words, trust and value. If you position yourself correctly, the sales process is a breeze. So how do you do this? Well, for starters, stop competing solely on price. Instead, position yourself as a niche expert and educate your leads. Then educate them again. Delaying the sale also helps to break down buying resistance and show you are not just in this for cold, hard cash. To back this up, always provide a guarantee. You should address any concerns or uncertainties your prospect may have about the sale. Furthermore, when it comes to offers, do not overwhelm your prospects. Having too many options can put people off. Have you ever heard of the story of the violinist who played for spare change in the subway? Well, the same violinist played in a fancy Boston concert hall a few nights earlier. Only this time, he was earning a whopping $60,000 per hour. Same music, same violin, but a monumental difference in pay. What is the secret? It's all about positioning. If you establish yourself as a niche expert, you will attract customers who value quality over discount rates. Once you have established a credible level of service, you can charge premium prices. Be sure to offer a risk-free option that shows your commitment to customer satisfaction. But do not try to cheat your way to the top. Deliver the goods. Then, using pro positioning, you can command the prices you deserve. Still not convinced you can offer high-ticket items? There is one simple reason why you should. According to market research, price is an indicator. By offering premium options, you can position your company as a leader and attract customers willing to pay for the best. Think about it. Would you rather play in a local club or at Carnegie Hall? Whatever your prices are, make sure you offer convenient payment options. So to increase conversions, you must first establish yourself as an expert. Next, educate your leads and make their options clear. After that, a guarantee can help seal the deal. Finally, remember that sales are your company's lifeblood, so ensure your staff knows this. Congratulations, you have completed part six of your marketing plan. Chapter five. Develop systems that turn customers into loyal fans. The final stage of your one-page marketing plan involves converting your customers into loyal fans. So, how can you ensure that your customers come back for more? The solution is efficient marketing, sales, fulfillment, and administration systems. The aim is to reduce as much friction as possible. By streamlining technological processes, we can increase sales while making customers happier. Your client base is valuable because you've already built trust with prospects. So why not reactivate them? Entice customers to return via direct mail, email, or SMS. Send them an offer they cannot refuse. For example, you can email old leads with personalized subject lines like, We miss you. Come back for 15% off your next order. You can also increase lifetime value through referrals. Requesting referrals is easy. If you have delivered a good result for a customer, they will be more than happy to pass your name on to their friends and colleagues. So be proactive. Ask satisfied customers for feedback and find ways to help other businesses in your network. But how do you know if all this effort is paying off? Well, you track key metrics like the number of leads, conversion rates, and average order value to figure out what is working and what is not. This isn't a one-time thing. These numbers must be logged, managed, and improved regularly. Not all customers are the same, so decide which ones are best for your business and focus on them. Let demanding customers go. They waste your time and money. Most businesses stop marketing once a prospect becomes a customer. Unfortunately, this limited mindset only restricts business growth. Remarkable businesses, on the other hand, realize that each customer has the potential to bring in more revenue. Fortunately, small businesses have more flexibility. 
In this case, they have an advantage as they can carefully oversee and respond to client needs and feedback. Final summary. To succeed in direct response marketing, develop a routine and commit to it. Embrace technology to stay ahead of the competition. Remember, the key to attracting and retaining customers is delivering value consistently. Identify what your customers need and offer solutions that meet their demands. If you remain proactive and consistent, you will create a solid customer base. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to The Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.